the Cu2 plus ions that are present in the solution along with the sulfate ions. Cu2 plus ions underwent reduction, that is, they accepted the two electrons and copper was found deposited on the copper electrode, and that is how the weight of the copper rod increased. And hence they concluded that in the zinc half cell, oxidation occurs. In the copper half cell, reduction occurs. Now the question arises, how do the electrons enter into the copper half cell? The flow of electrons is via the external electric circuit. And to check the flow of electrons, we have collected the A meter or the voltmeter, which indicates that the current is getting produced. It was found that the direction of the flow of electrons is from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell. Since the electrons are getting produced from the zinc half cell, the zinc half cell came to be known as anode in which oxidation occurs and it got represented as a negative electrode. Electrons are transferred via the zinc half cell and it reaches to the copper half cell here the cathode on which reduction occurs and it is becoming the positively charged electrode. So basically the flow of electrons in an electrochemical cell galvanic cell is from anode which is the negative part to the cathode which is the positive part. Vice versa, as we know if the flow of electrons is from anode to cathode then the flow of current will be from cathode to anode. Now after some time it was observed that the current in the emitter or the voltmeter stops to fluctuate. The reading stop. That is the cell stops to function. That is where the salt bridge is come to be used. Salt bridge, it is an inverted U-shaped glass tube that is filled with inert electrolytes like KCl or KNO3 or NH4Cl that are solidified in agar-agar gel. Okay, solidified, semi-solid gel-like substance of KCl or KNO3 or any other inert electrode electrolyte is getting filled up in the salt bridge. These are the two important plugs that are at both the ends of the salt bridge and both the ends of the salt bridge are dipped in each of the half cells. So, what is the function of the salt bridge? The salt bridge helps to complete the entire circuit of the electrochemical cell. That is the first one. How does it complete the circuit? It helps to maintain the electrical neutrality of the solutions in both the half cells. How does it maintain the electrical neutrality? For that we need to understand the property working. Now as I told you previously, zinc rod is going on undergoing oxidation. So there is accumulation of Za2 plus ions within the weaker area. That is sulfate ion concentration remains as it is but there is accumulation of the positive ions, okay? At the same time, in the copper half cell, Cu2 plus is undergoing reduction, it is getting deposited. As a result, the concentration of sulfate ions within the weaker B is increased. So as a result, you can say that zinc half cell becomes positively charged, copper half cell becomes negatively charged. As a result, due to this imbalance in the among the ions, the cell stops to function. What happens here is from the salt bridge, positive and the negative ions will enter into each of the half cells. Here there is increase in the positive charge, so Cl minus ions will enter into the beaker A and here K plus ions will enter into the beaker B and helps to maintain the electrical neutrality of the cell. Now question arises, you may ask, teacher, K plus is here minus, won't they, re won't they react with Zn2 plus or a sulfate balance? No. That is why I specified the term, it is an inert electrolyte. These are the electrolytes which will enter into the half cells, but they will not react and even if they will react, it's an aqueous solution, so they will be in the ion form. Positively charged. In an electrochemical cell, remember, anode is negatively 
solid gets converted into Zn2 plus ions plus two electrons are released. At the cathode, which is positively charged, reduction occurs. The Cl2 plus ions from the solution will accept the electrons that are coming through the circuit, and the copper is getting reduced and gets deposited on the copper electrode. So the net reaction, that is the net redox reaction that occurs in an electrochemical cell, is. Zn solid plus Cu2 plus aqueous gets converted into Zn2 plus aqueous plus Cu solid. Okay. Now in this, this was the construction and working. In here, the reading that is observed in the voltmeter is for an electrochemical galvanic cell. The value was found. One point one zero volts. This value is termed as cell potential. Now, what do you mean by cell potential? To understand the cell potential, first we need to know electrode potential of each half cell. So basically, electrode potential of the zinc half cell, electrode potential of the copper half cell. Now, what is electrode potential? Now there are two options whenever a metal plate is dipped in its solution. Either the metal will undergo oxidation and gets converted into ions, or the metal ions from the solution will accept the electrons and gets converted into the metal form. So at the electrode electrolyte junction. That is, at this place, there are two options: either oxidation occurs or reduction occurs. That will depend on the tendency of that metal whether it has more ability to undergo oxidation or more ability to undergo reduction. If the metal, in this case of zinc half cell, has more ability or it has more tendency to undergo oxidation, then the potential difference is developed between the zinc. Similarly, copper has more tendency to undergo reduction, and the Cu2 plus ions from the solution will get reduced to form the Cu solid. This is termed as electrode potential. Electrode potential is the tendency of the metal electrode to either undergo oxidation or to undergo reduction. Now, what do we mean by standard electrode potential? When the concentration of the both solutions is unity, that is one molar, then the electrode potential is termed as standard electrode potential. That is standard electrode potential of the zinc half cell and standard electrode potential of the copper half cell. Experimentally, it was found that that. Now see students here before that the potential is represented by the symbol E. If it is in the standard conditions, it is represented as E naught. Okay. Standard reduction potential of zinc is equals to minus zero one seventy six volts and. Of copper is zero point thirty four volts. It was found experimentally that we will study later. It was found experimentally that the standard once again interpretation standard. Look at the symbol. Metal ion is getting converted into metal. Standard reduction potential of zinc. Is minus 0.76 volts. Standard reduction potential of copper is plus 0.34 volts, and the potential difference between the reduction potentials of both the half cell is termed as cell potential. So, simple cell potential is the difference in the electrode potential of both the half cells. And it can be represented by the formula: standard cell potential is equals to standard reduction potential at cathode minus standard reduction.
reduction potential at N. If it is of oxidation, then it will be standard oxidation potential at anode minus